Do, 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 do. Well, it looks like I'm on air, okay. Um, let me let this other thing catch up real quick so I can mute it. Well, it looks like I'm on air, okay. Yeah, okay, let's mute that. Go back here, put it right there. And uh, okay, just getting okay, all right. Let's see if we can get this party started. <clears throat> Uh, hey, Creole One, Kicking Horse. Hey, yeah, long time no see. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. Glad to see you. <laughs> this is, <laughs> hey, I've never, I've never taken on this subject before. Actually, I have, but not really. I, I really don't deal with male female relationships that type of thing, yeah, I really don't. But before I begin, just set all this stuff up. In the name of my ancestor, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition, Google Live edition, as you know, of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper or the host of this program, known here, wherever you may find me, as Angel Snub Nub Seven, the mighty one. Ah! And uh, your soul brother number one. And uh, the topic that I've chosen for today is interesting. Really, for me, sort of difficult. And I'll tell you why it's sort of difficult. Um, the art of macking. And this video was inspired by the title of a book written by our friend and Hidden Colors documentary maker, Tariq Nasheed, who is not making movies right now. He's in a beef with Dr. Umar Johnson and Boyce Watkins, and that's a documentary all to itself. <laughs> but you know, prior to Hidden Colors, our brother Tariq Nasheed, he was writing books. I guess that's the books is what made him sort of like a celebrity or famous. He wrote books talking about macking, being a Mac daddy. And I wanted to talk about macking because this rostrum represents soul. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not talking about going back to the 70s. I'm not going to do a Kemet on you. I'm not returning back to the 70s. I'm just building on the concept of soul. I'm not asking you, everybody, let's grow up afros and, 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 and let's call our houses cribs again. No, no, we, we're not going back. That's, that's good nostalgia. But we're not returning to the 70s. We're just building up on what we created. Our ancestors gave us this concept called soul. And this word macking came from up out of that time period. So we have Tariq Nasheed, who is now black conscious, pro-black something or whatever. And he's changed his ways. He's no longer macking, I guess. He's a married man or whatever. And, uh, but he wrote this book, The Art of Macking. That's what inspired me. I will admit and confess, I did not read none of the book. I'm gonna base everything that I say on my own personal experience. And that's going to be sort of bad. I can't call myself a Mac, or can I? We will see. What brings me to this topic also is that mm, it's, it's sort of sad. It seems as though so many in YouTube land, social media land, Black uh, soul brothers, they seem to be sexually frustrated they are really really angry 
because I guess they can't get none or whatever, and they are really, really, really angry. Now, what I've noticed about these kind of fellas is that as long as they don't have a woman in their life, a woman, I don't see none of them asking for a man. I don't, I don't, it's usually a woman involved. And uh, yeah, so what I notice about these poor brothers, sexually frustrated or whatever, what I notice about them, as long as they don't have a woman in their life, somebody to, they can share a little something, something with, the black women hate this. If you notice, I can guarantee you, most of these guys that don't like black women and the black women do this, they are our worst enemy and all this kind of stuff. I can guarantee you most times they don't have a woman in their life. They don't, they probably didn't even have a, a good relationship with their mother. But definitely they don't have a girlfriend or wife. I can, I mean, if I'm wrong, you know, tell me, but I don't. Most of them don't, they don't have nobody in their life. I know a brother and he's my Facebook friend. And he used to have a YouTube channel. I think he took it down, but he's on Facebook. And now he has a girlfriend right now. But prior to him not having a girlfriend, all the women this and the black women do that. And the but he messed around and got a girlfriend, a soul sister, matter of fact. And he posts pictures. She she can cook and she cleans and she seems to be a pretty nice person. And now, all of a sudden, you don't you don't hear him talking about hey, the black women do this. They are our worst enemy in the black. You don't. He tries to do it a little bit, but he has a he has a love in his life now. <laughs> all that's gone. That's the problem. Sexual frustration. These guys are finding it very difficult to find somebody to love. Even the ones that might have Caucasian girlfriends or Latino girlfriends, whatever, they still keep talking that nonsense because they really don't want the Latino. They really don't want the white woman. They want that soul sister. They want you. And it's frustrating because they don't know how to get you. We are so out of touch. The reason why I really don't make videos about male-female relationships is because my primary focus is on the development of a better human being. If you can develop a better human being where one human being respects the other and we understand our role as far as gender in our society, in our culture, our role in nature, that, that in, in and of itself makes it easier for you to find that special person, much easier if you develop a better human being. A lot of us have baggage that we carry. She's messed up and you're messed up. Two messed up people coming together, it's not going to work. So you have on this side, oh, the black man do this, and the black man is the most pitiful and the pathetic from the woman's side, and on the on the men's side, and black women, they so ratchet in the way. That's because you have a messed up human being on this side and a messed up human being on the other side. So we need to, we both need to develop ourselves better. So if we create a better human being. That just makes things, that makes the, the genders coming together, that makes that interaction and combination and that coming together much, much easier. But we don't want to develop, we don't want to be better. We want to stay the same that we are with our little nasty habits, our behaviors and attitudes. We don't want to change nothing. And then you wonder why you're sexually frustrated. Now, for me, Personally, for me, I'm at the age where I don't care anymore, really. I don't. Actually, I, I really never, I really don't. That's not something I ever experienced. I never experienced sexual frustration because I've always had the attitude 
I can take it or leave it. It ain't that exciting. It ain't, don't mean that much to me. And as some of you may know, I sort of have a little crush on my soul sister, Terry Ellis, you know, from that group in Vogue. And I saw an interview with her. And she said the same thing, basically. I can take it or I'll leave it. So if you can take it or leave it, you can't become sexually frustrated. It's not that, I mean, if it happened, it happened. If it don't, I, I, you'll never see me angry because I can't get no woman. And you will never see Terry Ellis talk about she's angry. I just cannot find a man because it. I can take it or leave it. But for so many of you, you don't want to leave it. Because you want to feel good. Even if it's even if it's for a few minutes, you just want to, I just want to touch. I just want to, I just want to feel something. So along, you know, along with Tariq Nasheed's inspiration, I want to talk about and try to inspire some of you, some of you who are of the sexually frustrated. <laughs> Uh, I don't understand. I don't understand. The Art of Macking, a book by Tariq Nasheed, filmmaker of in in what I was I was gonna say in living color, hidden colors. This was a phrase that came from up out of the 70s, I'm pretty sure. Mac, macking, Mac Daddy. Why do you, what is macking? Well, macking simply basically is you are, um, you're trying to court a female. I mean, you can, I mean, we can even bring it up to, to, to date. You might be a man trying to court a man. We're not talking about that today. <laughs> you might be a woman trying to get you a woman. I, we're not talking about that today. When we talk about macking, and as I know it was meant in the 70s, it was meant a brother trying to get with a sister and, you know, trying to, bring, you know, give a line, try to get her attention. And uh, for what? You want to talk to the sister? For what? You want to talk to this woman? For what? What is it that? you want is it something you want i remember one time i was talking to a sister one time and, I, and she asked me is this something you want <laughs> you know, all this talking that you do you're doing you try to impress me what is this something that you want <laughs> i started to be honest <laughs> but you know when you're macking you got to try to be cool calm and collect <laughs> yeah uh peace to the to the chat room uh creole again and uh kg just showed up kg said macking is how to get over on a female you, you're absolutely correct it's how to get over on a female it's exploitation it's negative but now also macking can be positive you don't necessarily have to use your evil power you know for that you can use the the science or the strategy of macking for positive. You don't have to try to exploit somebody. What is it that you want? <laughs> now, see, macking, it really should not be something that should be taught. You know, it's not something that you should, should be taught. That is something I'm talking about positive. I'm not talking about exploitation. I'm talking about on the positive tip, talking to a female, you should not have to be taught this. It should be something that is natural. But in today's society, especially with social media and we talk through computers, we have forgotten or the young men don't know how to talk to nobody. They know how to go to a computer and write stuff. And when they meet somebody in person, 
they talk to people like they're writing on a computer and then get frustrated with the response. Not going to work. KG, what you said, but you don't Mac to get a wife. Oh, yeah, you, you, can, you can Mac to get a wife. It's just not, you're just not doing it for evil purpose. We call it macking or, try, or courting. You're trying to court somebody. This subject is macking. Mac actually is negative. But we're going to try to put a positive spin on it because it don't necessarily have to be positive. I mean, negative. But of course, that's how it's mostly, most of the time when you talk about macking, you're talking about exploitation, trickery, deceit. That's what you're talking about. But the poor brothers, they, they go ahead and they sexually frustrated and they go to the bookstore online or whatever. They have to buy Tariq Nasheed's book, The Art of Mackin. Hmm. I guess Tariq Nasheed knows how to do it. I mean, he's married now and he has his wife. A lot of people talk about his wife. She's not african American. I don't know what she is. Some type of, maybe she's some type of biracial. I, I, don't, I don't know. But that's what he ended up with, you know. You such a Mac, but you end up married. You know, Macs and pimps don't get married, sir. But I guess he settled down. Let me make some Hidden Colors films. And he's making these Hidden Color films. And y'all don't know it. But the brother's still macking. We're going to talk about that. He's still macking. Macking don't necessarily mean that you're talking to a woman. You can also be macking. Right. He teaches the art. It's, it's the art of manipulation. Hey, you want to do this video, KG? <laughs> Here, come on. You can, you can do this video. <laughs> oh, man. But you're right. You, you're absolutely correct. It's the art of manipulation. But you don't, you don't necessarily, again, have to do that in a negative manner. You could do that in a positive manner. It's natural for a man to want a woman and a woman to want a man. But uh, we have a problem here. In our position in America as soul brothers, our problem here is that you want this woman real bad. We can tell you want this woman real bad. You want this soul sister real bad. And you frustrated, you don't know how to get her. But you really don't know how. First look at your position in life. Yeah, I, I believe she is some sort of biracial something. I don't know what she is. Uh, Tariq Nashi's uh, wife. Here we are, soul brothers in America. This woman or no woman is, 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 is free. In fact, we as a people in living in this country, we call ourselves free, but you and I both know we are not free people. We don't act as free people. We can't even really comprehend what freedom is. So she's a slave and you're a slave and you want to get down with the female slave. But as a man, listen, see, this is this is this is one part of our problem. We got we have our priorities all messed up. Here we are, soul brothers, living in this nation. We live with the oppressor, we live with the racist. We we as men depend on another man for our survival. How does this look in her eyes? That's our number one problem. We don't look good in her eyes when another man is taking his penis, sliding it down our backside. Everything you got, and you, and you tell me anything different, somebody come on this form and show me where you are not directly or indirectly. The reason why you're surviving is because of another man, and that man is the oppressor. 
The money in your pocket got the oppressor's face on it. You went to his stores to get to buy his chickens, his milk, driving his cars. Everything about you is him. And you want this woman to look at you like you're a man. I deserve for you to talk to me. Uh, you have the right. It's a privilege. It's a, it's a privilege for you to talk to me, matter of fact. Who the hell are you? That's your first challenge. That's the first hurdle you have to get over. A woman is attracted to strength. Even if you was fighting the cracker and you lost, don't you know women and the children would look at us better because we would look brave. We look courageous. But now the only thing that we do is sit back and watch TV and watch for the Super Bowl. The, the, the NAAC, I was forgetting when I said the NAACP, uh, the NCAA, whatever I said, because I don't keep up with that garbage. I don't keep up with that mess. Just the fact that you are a warrior. I'm not talking about some of these cats that come on YouTube. I'm a warrior. I'm a soldier. I ain't did that. Ain't gonna burst, ain't gonna bust the great. I ain't talking about that kind. Even if you was fighting and losing, don't you know your women and your children would look at us in a better manner? You scared, you just you just outright scared. Period. And that's 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 a shame. Nothing wrong with losing as long as you fight. What is the old saying? A a uh, a coward dies a thousand deaths, but a brave man dies once. And I know about that personally because I was a scared jackrabbit, always running from somebody. I know about I know about fear and running and being scared. I know about it personal experience. Nobody likes no coward. No woman wants a coward for no man. If you fight and lose, she'll, she'll feel better that you did fight. But here you are running behind her skirt. <laughs> Ain't no woman going to respect us. As long as we are in the condition that we're in, no female, even Caucasian women, if they was truthful, they don't have no respect for you. You're a coward and you can't stand up for yourself. And it's really gay to have to be dependent on another man. Another man it should not be dependent on another man. If you claim to be a man, it should be embarrassing for you. But here we are. I don't care if you Will Smith. I don't care if you are a Tyrese Gibson or some of these guys that got a lot of money. All that money, everything, P. P. Diddy or whatever the hell they are, everything they got via directly, indirectly, and they still depend on on. Devils, they still depend on the crack. So there's nothing exciting about us so that she can meet us halfway. Then maybe we can make a move. She don't even want to come near you because you don't, we don't, we don't look good. We don't want to accept that. You are a slave that want to be treated as though you are a true free man, and you're not. We're not. That's why we need to come up out of this. This is why our so-called black leadership, this is the number of things, this is the thing. Our leadership need to be developing manhood, true manhood. They're not, they're, they have failed in that job. The number one thing that you need to make for the brothers is to make us men. Win or lose, we willing to stand up and fight, win or lose. Every time I talk about fighting, we going to lose. We gonna, you ain't even tried to fight. You ain't trying to do a damn thing. We going to lose if they're going to kill us. Oh, wow. I would rather die with some honor than a coward. Now, mm, here we are. The only thing on your mind. You sexually frustrated. You put a lot of energy in that. You come on social media and you write, all oh, the black women is our enemy and the, and the black women do this and take the weeds out your hair. You want to get all that frustration off of you. All that energy. But you won't put that same type of frustration in your liberation. In your, um, in your, in, in yourself. Build yourself as a, a strong male. 
As a strong male, liberation is my first priority. I don't care about nothing else. I remember when I was locked up, they didn't want me to keep thinking about getting out of, out of that situation. They brought me women because they thought, man, let them have the women, keep women, keep some vagina in his face. Maybe he'll, he'll chill out. Wrong. You have the wrong, wrong one here. It was a system when I was locked up. I really liked this young lady. I, I was 10, 12 years older than her, I believe. But I, I, when I first saw this sister, I, I liked that. I sure did. And I, I fell in love with her. I liked this woman. You know how sometimes you can just see somebody. Invo has a song about Deja Vu. I saw her, the first time I saw her, first time I saw her, I liked that woman. And so they saw, my enemy saw that I had a you know little special thing for this woman. And they're gonna try to use her to get me to do what they want me to do. Not, nah. and I told her, I said, I like you. Matter of fact, I could even say that I love you. It ain't happening. I have to do what I have to do to get out of here. You don't understand the process and you don't know what's going on here. But I got to do something here. So your best bet, really, dear. You're gonna have to chill out. You have to stay back. Don't let them get in your ear and talk about, you know, try to get you to do their dirty work. Cause I don't wanna view you as an enemy. Cause it's cause I can love you this minute and hate you the next when it comes to my freedom. Did, did you hear what I just said? I can love you, but if you interfere with my liberation and my freedom, I can turn right around and hate you just as much. Don't get involved. Don't. My, when it comes to my freedom, my being liberated, no. So you have these sexually frustrated people. Hmm. And here you are. Look at the problems we have in the so-called, this, this soul community, black community, whatever, African-Americanist community. Our people, especially uh, soul brothers, we go into jail all the time, suffering uh, uh, employment discrimination, housing discrimination. You got these crackers pulling up on us, actually blowing your brains out. And the only thing you can think about is a pair of panties. You sexually frustrated. Oh, the black women, the weeds. Oh, the black women is our enemy. Oh, the black women are the enemy. You put a pair of panties over our liberation as a people. You should be thinking about being a warrior. You can always get some damn panties after the fight is over. And if you can't, then you sacrifice for the benefit of us as a people for our liberation. That's more of an honor than running around here because you want a woman, so as in religion say, so that you can commit fornication and adultery and make these babies you're not gonna take care of. You're not taking care of these babies, all these children that we have in orphanages and the foster care system. Then some of y'all, I don't, I'm against abortion. You against abortion, but you don't, but you won't adopt none of none of our children in foster care or um or, or uh, uh, uh orphanages, however that goes. You won't adopt our babies, but you don't like abortion. So who's supposed to be taking care of these babies? that we're making and not taking care of. The state has no choice but to take care of the children that you make. No pair of panties is above my liberation and my freedom. I have a little crush on Terry Ellis, but she goes down the list. She's not number one priority. The liberation of this people, because you need it, you deserve it. Going on 500 years of hell, you deserve to be liberated from this damn oppressor. That's more important than her, as far as I'm concerned. You can always get a pair of panties. Matter of fact, you get your liberation 
and the women be throwing panties at you because you look like a hero. Woo, he's a strong soldier. He's a woo. That's got to be a good man. I won't have to chase Terry no more. She'll come to me. Soldier got us out of this predicament. You don't think that way. You just a feral slave running around. You want to play and pretend to be free. And can't do nothing for yourself, can't do nothing for her. We don't act like strong men. Don't even look like strong men. We should not even handle, we should not even tolerate a cop shooting one of us in the head. Somebody got to pay. But see, the enemy knows they can kill us. It don't make no difference. There's no, there's no consequence. And so they do what they do. But if we really were strong men, like we pretend and claim to be, and viewed ourselves as brothers and sisters, you kill one of us, somebody gonna pay somewhere. There are people who come from other countries. If you come from France, or maybe even Africa, or some, some of these different places, if you come to America and you are murdered, you have to answer to that country. Look, our people came to your country and they was murdered. That country, you're gonna have to answer for that. This nation has to answer. Our citizen got killed while visiting your, your country. Uh, what y'all gonna do about it? And that's the same way it should be with us. Somebody gonna pay something, something's gonna be done. But they kill us and murder us, rape our women, kill our children, our babies right in front of our eyes. And they know there's no consequence. And you go on social media, I sure want a pair of panties because somebody just throw me, can you just throw a couple so it can look like I'm doing something? <laughs> mm. Peace to you, Sister Femtress. I'm going to mention that fella just slightly. He's not important to me right now. I'm going to mention him just a, just a little, little taste. If there was real men coming up, he would not exist. But we are sexually frustrated. And see, so the weak, these weak guys run to anybody that can represent their frustration. Now, what you must understand, women are attracted to strength. Just look like you're strong. You don't have to be Mr. Macho. I mean, just, just look like it a little bit. We can't even play it off. That's how pathetic we are. We can't even play it off. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Now, I want to tell y'all, I just want to give a little advice and suggestion to my sexually frustrated brothers. You can take it or let it alone, it makes no difference. Um, because I'm just like you. I'm not no macho guy. A nerd, I was a bookworm, little skinny fella, weight, weight less than 100 pounds. I'm just like you. Well, I, well, not just like you because like I said, I never, I never have experienced sexual frustration. I did want a girlfriend, but it wasn't for sex because I wasn't, I really wasn't interested in, in, in that until I was really grown, till I was almost out of high school and stuff because I didn't want to grow up fast. I didn't want to be an adult fast. I could wait on all that stuff. Didn't mean nothing to me, but I did want a girlfriend. I wanted, you know, because I did fall in love with the girl. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> so I'm going to show you a little something that I learned in my struggle because uh, I had a father in the in the house. He wasn't no good. My mother was a married woman and she was a single mother. But my father was in the house. So what? Big deal. He didn't teach me nothing at all. So everything I'm telling you is that I had to learn by trial and error. And that's the way you're going to have to learn through trial and error. And that can be frustrating because 
We want what we want it right now. Well, you can want what you want it right now, but you're not going to get it. Hey, that's a song by Invo. Never going to get it, never going to get it, never going to. Hey, right. I got Invo itis <laughs> Now, let me tell y'all something, soul brothers. Whenever you see a man, and I know y'all get sexually frustrated, and you start running to men that helped you in your frustration, like Tommy Sotomayor, and there, there's a whole lot of other ones out there too. Let me let me tell y'all something though. Every man you see is your competition for that woman. <laughs> Every man you see is competition for that woman. Even Tommy Sotomayor. Tommy Sotomayor and you might like the same woman and y'all talking all this crap and y'all supposed to be boys because y'all sexually frustrated, but he's also your competition. And then he'll, he won't see you as a friend no more when y'all both after the same woman. All men are is your competition, even to the point. Now this is this is this this is the extreme, even to the point where I where you have cases where brothers fight will fight another brother over a woman. Two brothers might like the same woman. There have been cases where one brother killed the other brother because they like the same woman, because you, we are in competition, because we can become, in, uh, every man you see, including your brother, can be your competition for the, for the liking of a woman. It can also get to the point where even your father, I've seen and heard cases about even the father, there are some sons and their fathers get into it because they like the same woman. Every so every male that you see is competition for you when seeking out a mate or, or a soul sister. So here you are, you praise, you might praise Tariq Nasheed. He's married, but that don't mean he won't chase the woman that you like. You praise Tommy Sotomayor, but he might chase this, the woman that you like. So he's your competition. Then what? First is the, the black women do this and the black women do that. So what happens when Tommy Sotomayor or Tariq Nasheed or some other sucker out there that y'all praising, what if you was after the same woman? Every man, every male is your competition. That's just, that's, that's how it goes. Even in nature, you see that. Males are in competition with one another. It makes no difference in the father or uncle or whatever. That's, that's, that's how it goes. But as human beings, you know, if, you, if, if your brother like a girl, you, you should back off. You know, my brother saw her first or whatever, let, you know. But sometimes it don't go that way. Because we get caught up. I got, to, I just got to have that, man. Ooh, that's... See me, I could take it a little long. There's no boobs, there's no legs, there's no butt. There's nothing that I can take it a little long. I look at you, wow, that show look nice. And keep rolling. But some of y'all, oh man, I just get frustrated and get the get the shakes and <laughs> what's up with that? I don't I don't get it. I, I I don't know. You know, uh, my sister Filmtress, disrespecting and putting sisters down, call her bed wenches, would not endear her to you. And see, that's another thing. Uh, some of us try to talk to females. And actually, we talk to them like that. We talk about bed winches and, and hair hat hooligans. We talk to them that kind of a manner. And then you try to clean it up like, uh, oh, I'm not talking about you. When you're talking about women, you're talking about women. Your mother is a woman. Your sister is a woman. When you call a woman a bed winch, you're calling all of them. I don't care. You can use that as an excuse. And then when you get angry, you will call all these women bed winches and hair, hair, hair hat hooligans and all these other wacky names that y'all, all these childish names that you come up with when, when you get angry and mad. But I'm not talking about all women until you get angry at them. 
When you call women bad witches and whores and bitches and all this stuff, you're talking about all women, including your damn mama. Excuse me, I don't mean to say your damn mama. Your mother. You talk about your mother and your sisters, female cousins. They all are women, so they all in that same category. And some of these idiots even said over 90 some percent of the women are bed, bed winches and sluts and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, hey, but you try to clean it up when you like somebody. As soon as you get angry, and I seen the behavior from Mr. Tommy Sotomayor dude. When he likes somebody, it's all, all gravy. As soon as he don't like some, uh, yeah, yeah, your bed winch, your hat. I, I don't mean when he likes you, uh, it's all good. But when he don't like you, all this, you be, you become a whore and a bed winch and all this other stuff. Fake. And y'all actually support these fake ass people. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Uh, like I said, I could take it or leave it alone. It ain't that important. My number one priority is the liberation of a people from an oppressor. You can get panties anytime. And we have enough children. We don't need no more children anyway. What the hell y'all want to run around here and get keep getting these babies that you can't support? That just go, just just that goes to show that you're nothing but a, a damn slave. But let me go ahead and try to give us some uh, hmm, give us some pointers here from somebody. I've been in your shoes. I've never been sexually frustrated, but I know how it feels when you you just want to cuddle with somebody. You know what I'm saying? You just, you just want to test their hand. You know, slide down the back and test the butt a little bit. You know. I know how y'all feel. I, you know, I, I understand. I understand. You know where it starts with? First of all, it starts with confidence. You have to be confident in who and what you are. If you don't have confidence, nothing's going to happen. The only thing you're going to do is keep going to social media. Oh, the black women do this. And black women, black women love white men and all this stuff to make excuses for yourself. I don't know where you're going to get this confidence from, but you have to get confidence, get confidence in yourself. And you cannot be a Mac daddy unless you learn how to talk. You cannot be a Mac daddy playing on the computer. Being a Mac daddy or try or learning how to communicate with somebody, you have to communicate with living persons that can that you can interact with so that you can know what will work and what will not work. You cannot do that through a computer. Matter of fact, some of y'all so pathetic, the way that you talk on computers, if you did that in person, you might get shot in the head. You really pathetic. You really have no concept in how to interact with nobody. Learn how to talk to people. Respect. You have to respect that woman. Don't be talking to per people. And some of these, I've seen some of these guys try to talk to women. And it's quite obvious. They, they go straight down to the breast, try to look between their legs. It's quite obvious. Y'all don't have no kind of, <laughs> you know, you, what, you don't have no kind of, uh, I'm not looking, I'm, I'm looking at the word swag, but it's not the word swag. I mean, it's quite obvious. Because see, when you first approach her, she automatically gonna think that's what you want anyway. You want to get between her legs. She already so here you are talking, and and you looking between her legs, and she might she might have this little halter top, and you looking down her bra. You know, you know, come on, man. You know, it's quite obvious. You know something? I not like I said. I done done it many times. I don't look down many bras. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, you know. I don't look, but I, it's not quite obvious. You got to do it on the, on the down low, you know. You checking her out? I mean, you got to check her out. I mean, and plus she got it right there in her, in, her, in her face, you know, like you know. So, but you don't make it quite obvious. That's what you're doing. Come on now. I mean, have some, have some. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't think of the word. But you know, come on, you know, have, have a little. Mm, to the, you can't just just be outright like that because that's what she thinks that you want anyway. So I mean, you know, you got to have a strategy to what you're doing. Um, 
I'll give you an example how I play this thing. I always tell you how I'm around the sisters or whatever, and I was telling you about, yeah, that's the word. Thank, thank you, Phil. You gotta have a little tact. That's the word I was looking for. I could, I could not think of that, that little baby word to save my life. See, that's why it's good to have people, that's why it's good to have brains on your side. I could not think of that little word, because I haven't, sister, I haven't used that word. <laughs> you know, I haven't used that word in so long. You know, I forgot. I forgot about that word, but yeah, you got to have a little tact in, in, in how you're doing things. You don't just, you just don't be out there like that, you know. Treat her like a lady. If you if you are listening to people like Tommy Sotomayor, Tariq Nasheed, and some of these other idiots out here, they don't they don't teach you. They can't show you, especially through example. They cannot show you how to treat her like a lady. Treat her with respect. Now, what you what you thinking inside your head, that's different. You keep that to your damn self. You don't let her see that. Again, but you got to have confidence. All that is not met. All that you cannot do until you get the confidence in yourself. And see, the way I've done it, well, when I was a child, it was this, it was this young girl, uh, and I talked about her. Her name was Ida. Love Ida. Everybody know I love Ida. And uh I had to let Ida know I liked her. Sometimes you just got to put yourself out in the water. Otherwise, the fish going to get away. That's the fish that you want. You might not have the confidence. You might not can't talk that well. But you got to do something. So me, I just, I just had to jump in the water and go for it. Either I catch the fish or I don't, but I got to try here. Because otherwise, the fish is just, just going to slide away. How a woman is going to know that you like her unless you tell her she don't know. And you don't know she might like you. You don't know that. So you have to have that confidence. We have to learn how to communicate with another human being. She's not a whore. She's not a bed wench. She don't owe you nothing. Communicate with another human being. I was telling you about how I. Uh, Communicate or interacted with the with the MGT when I was in the Nation of Islam. I opened doors, helped the sisters across the street, whatever. See, that's setting you up the foundation for you to make a move. All that. Now I'm, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do as a man, but at the same time, I'm setting myself up so I can make that approach. Because the sisters are looking at me, wow, that brother, you know, look what he's doing. He's he's such a gentleman. I, I open doors, I pull out chairs and stop traffic for the sisters to go across the street. That made me look good in the eyes of all the sisters. So the sister that I want or, or is interested in, if she talk about me, the only thing I'm gonna get is a good review from all the sisters. You understand? You setting yourself, you setting yourself up to make a move. So the sister that you like. You can escort her to her, her car and you can talk to her. And she's going to be open because you've already laid down a foundation to make that move. In the nation of Islam, you can't just outright ask a sister on a date. You have to go to your captain and tell your captain, I like Sister Sharon. And then the, the captain will go to the, to the sister captain and tell the sister captain, I got a brother here who likes Sister Sharon. Then that sister captain would tell Sister Sharon. And if Sister Sharon is interested, then they'll bring y'all together. But see, but see, I already had contact with Sister Sharon by just doing what I normally do anyway. So Sister Sharon already know who I am. See? And it, you didn't have to do a whole lot of talking. Just act. Just be nice. Just be a gentleman. Just be a man. The door for me already open, see? Unfortunately, during my, my time, all the sisters was too old for me. I was 18 years old, all the sisters was a little bit too older than me. And the sister that I did like was too young. Ain't that messed up? <laughs> yeah, so see, it's all about your strategy. Learn how to accept rejection because you're going to get it. You're not going to always be successful. 
Don't be tripping. Oh, she thinks she's the stuff. And she, everybody is not going to like you. Everybody you like is not going to like you. Everybody that likes you, you're not going to like them. So you just have to keep trying back and forth until we find that right combination. But we have to learn how to accept rejection and don't be angry and upset and all mad. Then all of a sudden, man, women's is bitches and whores. And uh, no, you is the bitch and the whore. Punk Negro, you can't handle rejection. Be yourself. Just just do you. And just 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 keep just keep yourself out there. You don't have to be sexually frustrated. There are millions of sisters, hundreds of sisters right in your community. If you have the confidence and learn how to talk, bring, you know, you don't have to be the greatest talker. Just bring up any kind of little thing to start a conversation. But you have to learn how to talk. Cause see, the male has to, the male has to carry the conversation. The female don't have to carry the conversation. It's up to you to start the conversation and be able to carry it. And if she's like you a little bit, you don't have to, you don't have to be fantastic. You know, you don't have to be articulate and all like that. She'll roll with you, no matter what you say. You can be talking about uh, uh, the Star Wars movie, uh, Mickey Mouse or something. If she like you, whatever corny situ uh, conversation that you come up with, she'll roll with you. But if she's not rolling with you, it's best to get off that train anyway. Hurry up and get rid of that real quick so you can go on do something else. And that's the, that's how you do, do that. Be yourself. Do something to start a conversation and communicate. And treat another human being like you want to be treated. She's not, she's not going to bite you. She's not going to try to hurt you. You know, back in my day, when I was younger, I wasn't popular. Some of y'all guys are not popular or whatever. You're not basketball players, football players. You're not, you're not wealthy or nothing like that. But I had a little talent. I used to be able to, to uh, mimic people. And I mimic uh, Elvis Presley. Now, mimicking Elvis Presley did not get me the, the girl that I wanted. But it got me the girls. Girls, oh, he do Elvis. I had girls around me all the time from all over the community. He does Elvis Presley. You know, so you know you 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 find something, and you might be able to play basketball. You might not be on the on the school team or nothing like that. But girls hang around, you know, the local basketball court. You know, do your thug thizzle. You know, show off it. It's different ways to get that conversation started. You don't have to run around here. All oh, the black women, black women love black men. That's the bottom line. They want us. We are tripping. We don't have that confidence. We can't handle rejection. We don't know how to talk. We don't have to communicate. Above all, we don't know how to treat women like ladies. We don't know how to treat them like queens and goddesses like we're talking about. It does not make no difference whether she deserve it or not. I pull out chairs for my sisters. If she got red and white, blue hair, whether she has weeds or whatever she is, she can be smoking weed. I treat my sisters like they are valuable because they are. And when you treat women like that, I've done uh, young women like that. They looking at me like, what, what, what are you doing? They are actually shocked. I didn't know guys did that. Yes, this guy does that. It is shocking to them at first. What is the old saying? You catch more bees with honey than vinegar. You think, you keep listening to these guys that's trying to be hard. You cannot be hard with no woman. A woman is soft. She's sensitive. And that's the, that's the way that you have to, it was, a, <laughs> it was a, a, a comedy sketch that Eddie Murphy did about Michael Jackson. And Michael Jackson had a song called uh, She's Out of My Life. And Eddie was like, singers, singers always get the women. They, they always get the women, like Michael Jackson because he's so sensitive. You ever heard that uh, song by, by Mike? She's out of my life. So I've learned, love's not possession. And I've learned, that love won't wait. And I've learned, 
and love needs expression. But I learned too late. And women get to cry a well because Michael's all sensitive and folks get to cry. See, that's the way you have to be. Women like stuff like that. They like that love dubby type thing. There was a singer called, uh, what's his name, Key Sweat? They talk about he begging. Women, I heard the sisters talk about Key Sweat. You might think that that's a man, that's simping, that, uh, uh, he's a mad giant. Uh, Key Sweat is not sexually frustrating. Women like to beg. You know, you know why women like for you to beg like that or sound like you begging? Because, because they want to feel wanted, not just in a sexual way, but they want to feel wanted, not lusted. I'm not talking about lust. Oh, baby, you sure got a big butt. Man, your breast shows is big. I'm not talking about, they want to feel wanted. If they cook you a good meal and they look like, and it looks like you are, are satisfied and you really enjoy, women like that. They like that. And she don't have to be the greatest cook in the world. But still, let her know, I really appreciate that. That was a bad steak. <laughs> that was a that was a bad thing. Oh, I'm not interested in what the, what you talking about. Uh, uh, what's his name? Return. He, this guy's always bothering me. <laughs> you damn Skippy. You damn Skippy. I'm using Tariq Nasheed to get hits. You damn Skippy. I'm never. <laughs> I, I, hey, I don't never have no shame in my game on that. You damn Skippy. People people have used my name to get hits back in the past when YouTube wouldn't bother me. If you put yourself in the public, Tariq Nasheed, Donald Trump, in Vogue, whoever you are in the in in, in the, the public arena, everybody's gonna use your name to get hits. Everybody does it. Don't get on my case about that nonsense. Stop being silly. Yeah, you damn skippy. That's right. And if I thought I could get hits on your name, I'll put your name in the title. You damn right. Ain't no shame in my game. <laughs> you damn right. <laughs> These people, man, they, they kill me. You know, stay in your lane. You know, there are some sisters, I know some of you, you want certain women or whatever. Some of them you just can't get. You know, Terry Ellis of Invoke is not in my lane. That's a reality. Not in my lane. Different status. However, if I can get in that lane, I got a 50-50 chance. But you know, for some, for many of us, you know, it's just not, it's not possible. So stay in your life. Matter of fact, there's nothing wrong with staying in your life. There's a lot of beautiful sisters that's in our lanes. We always want to try to, uh, I guess we feel better. I, I don't know. We always want to be, get something that, you know, it's just not a reality. That's for us. Get what that you're able to get and be happy because, and you know, and be happy with that. Ain't nothing wrong with, with staying in your lane. The only thing gonna happen is you're gonna stay sexually frustrated. That's y'all problem right now. Because if you had a woman in your life, you wouldn't see all these, these guys could, couldn't do what they're doing. But you're having problems because you can't communicate. And they made you feel like loving somebody is wrong. You got to be all hard and tough and and all this type of thing. You ain't gonna, you gonna always you're gonna be lonely a long time. Like I said, that brother that got that sister, he ain't talking all that crap like y'all talking about. He ain't talking about all oh, the black women do this and that. He ain't he ain't talking about that. Now I did see a post that he he made, and he was talking about uh the brother was talking about uh why why are there so many single black women oh i i could not let i could not let brother slide i could not let the brother slide i went to his post and i wrote on his post you have a soul sister when are you going to marry her if you that interested in single black women then why aren't you marrying her he didn't have no comment i ain't go well what the hell what the hell do you mean why are there so many single black women? Because of Nick, Nick, oh, ooh, I was getting ready to say the N word. <laughs> because of you. You won't marry her. Why? But 
you have a problem because there there is a she's a, because there's so many single women you Negroes, you're not marrying your women and why is that why you don't want to get married most of the time these Negroes don't want to get married because they don't want the responsibility of being married that's the reason why you know i go to my house you go to your house and you know shack up and all that kind of good stuff they like stuff like that they don't want the responsibility and a lot of sisters go for it that's all right with me too i don't want to be married but you're gonna give him your goodies and he don't have to have a responsibility for nothing bad mistake be like my sister terry i can take it or leave it i believe that sister there are more single black men and you know this uh I also question this crap they keep talking about. There are uh, there's a, a a vacuum in black men, soul brothers. Most of us are in jail. And I, well, explain to me how come every sister I ever wanted to chase, there was always a man there. If all the brothers is, is in jail, how come every woman I chase got a man? Explain that to me. But they are. But uh, they keep telling me that. Uh, there's not enough uh, soul brothers out here. I, 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 something about that don't even, eh, whatever. Anyway, moving on. So I gave you some suggestions on how you can move. And it's all about trial and error. I had to learn through trial and error. My feelings got hurt, yes. Went home and shed tears. How come she, how come she don't like me? How come she don't like me? Whatever. Yeah. But through child and error, you know, so. But that's how it goes. In many things, when you're trying to learn on your own, it's through trial and error. When I first learned the law, it was through trial and error. Took me years to get it right, but when I got it right, it was right. When you get it right, you're going to feel good about yourself. You're going to say, man, I took Angel Snuff Number 7 advice, and uh, now I got it going on. I got it going on. I can talk. I'm confident. Might have more than one sister on the side. Because you got you to gotta build that confidence in yourself. You can't be tripping on these Negroes on social media, even some of the faceless ones. They don't have good advice. They don't. There's a reason why you faceless. They don't have no good. They don't know no better than you, than you do. But uh, yeah, I'm talking about you, Return. Yeah, yeah. They don't. They don't know. They just it's 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 all entertainment for most people. But I'm not here to be your entertainer. I'm actually trying to give you some good advice, non-biased, giving it, giving it to you to the real from my experience because I was I was in your seat at one time. I was a nerd. Nobody liked me. I weighed 90 pounds. I was black. Right now, you see that I'm a dark skinned person, but actually, I'm darker than what you see. The only reason why I'm not darker is because I haven't been out in the sun like I normally would be. So I lighten up a little bit. I'm a very dark skinned person. And then during my time, you know, it was the lighter skinned brothers that was getting all the play. You know, you light skinned. So see, I had to fight against that too. And some of you might have to do the same thing, you know, because it still exists. But they make fun of, uh, but they, they make fun of my sister Rashida when she talks about darkism, but it still exists. And clearly there's a lot of people that can relate because they support her. And I understand exactly where she's coming from because I, because I know because of my dark skin, I was made mockery of because of my dark skin in my own family and most of my family members just as dark skin as I was and talking about you black this and you 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 cold and you and you look like a soot and I'm like you just as black as I am but that just goes to show you our sickness hmm. Now, there's a lot of things, advice that I've given 
the brothers here. I hope that it could be helpful. And some of it, I guess, some may view as giving away the secrets of the Mac. But I'm not giving away the secrets of the Mac. Because really, when you when you understand exactly how that goes, I was listening to a, a video, uh, that singer, that soul sister, uh, Maya, she was talking about a brother, you know, put down the Mac on her. And she, this is what she said. She said, I think the only thing he want is to get in my underwear. But she said that the brother's Mac was so tough, she still, she still went for it. See, that's how devastating, that's just how devastating, you know, when you get, when you learn how to talk and communicate, that's how devastating your Mac, people can know that you're putting down a line and they still go for it. That just goes to show you, it's about communication, it's about, it's about salesmanship because what you're really doing is selling yourself. When pimps and Mac daddies, when they approach women, when they first do it, they don't, they're not macho, come here, you bad wench, come here, you, that's not how they talk. They talk very nice to women. They, they, they compliment all that type of stuff. Next thing you know, she's a prostitute. Next thing you know, she's paying this, this guy's electric bill, his cell phone bill. Again, you catch more bees with honey than vinegar. But macking, like I said earlier, you don't, you don't have to always, that's not something that always have to be negative, even though that's what it was meant to be. It can be also a positive so that you can get that wife or this perfect girlfriend that you're looking for. So you don't have to be out here and the black women do this bed witches and hair hat hooligans and all these other names. You know, you can satisfy your sexual frustration. Have you, have you ever seen some, some guys that's really, really ugly? They even admit, I, I've seen guys, and they even say, man, I ain't the most prettiest guy in the world. But you, you will see them with a beautiful woman. Somebody told me that was me. <laughs> I, have a, I have some pictures of some of my past girlfriends, and people ask me, how, 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 you, how, you, how you she talked to Hey. You, a lot of times, you can be ugly or you don't have a lot of education. It's about how you communicate and how you talk, how you present yourself. You are selling yourself. Just like you would sell a computer, like you would sell a car, but in this case, you're trying to sell yourself. Now, for some of us, we have to work harder. You have some brothers out here, they, got the, they have the perfect hair, they have the little goatee, they look, you know, shaved a little beard, got a little muscles on them, and they don't have to try really, really hard. And that's good. But for some of us, you know, we have to work a little harder. So what? To me, it's all a challenge. You have to view this as a challenge. A challenge that you're going to win. You don't accept defeat. It's a challenge that you're going to win. Again, goes back to having confidence. You don't have to use this strategy for exploitation. And I want to say this in conclusion talking about the art of macking. Tariq Nasheed knows about the art of macking. And I don't think he really does that, talk about that or, or do interviews on that a whole lot anymore because now he's doing the Hidden Color series. He's a, he's a documentary filmmaker. And Boyce Watkins said, he's the, he's the greatest, the best filmmaker we got. I don't understand Boyce Watkins. I, I don't. He's always brown nosing some. If he's not brown nosing Farrakhan, he's brown nosing somebody. I don't. I don't. I don't understand Doctor Doctor Boyce Watkins. I don't. I don't understand what he's about. But see, Tariq Nasheed has taken the art of macking to a new level because he took it from women. Now he's taking it directly to the people, male and female. 
He uses his Mac style and understands the strategy and the concept and the psychology behind Macing. And now he's he's gotten all of you to buy Hidden Colors one, two, three, four, and he might do Hidden Colors number seventy five. And what does Hidden Colors do for us as a people? Absolutely nothing. But it fills his pockets, and he never he never said that he's going to do anything for the soul community, nothing. He's not gonna do nothing at all, period. He's laying down his mat. The preacher in the church laying down his mat. It's the science of exploitation. All preachers, all these teachers, even some of these scholars, they are laying down the mat. It's selling, selling you something for your exploitation. Because if it's not exploitation, what is the benefit? The only benefit you're seeing is that something is benefiting the one who is doing the selling. You're not getting nothing out of it. You're paying. You are the always the giver. You're never the receiver. So you see Tariq Nasheed, he's always the receiver. You don't see him giving because that's not what macking is about. The beginning, that's the, the term of it. That's not what it's about. It's about it's about exploitation. He does not really give a damn about black history, black folks, and all like that. It's a it's a hustle. Macking is called a hustle. That's my hustle. He understands what that's all about. He's a Mac daddy. And he has all these people. Boyce Watkins is a Mac Daddy. Omar Johnson. Sarah Sutton said, everybody, even myself. You know, I come in here, I'm trying to, to sell you something here. I'm trying to sell you an idea. I'm trying to present something to you. But I'm not going to use that power to exploit you. I want to give you something. I've just recently given away money. But that's not what my primary objective is. I want to give us and show us how to gain our liberation from a beast once and for all. So yeah, I can be called guilty of macking, but I'm trying to do it in a positive manner. That's what I'm doing. That's what I want. I don't want to exploit you. So the only thing Tariq, Tariq Nasheed did was go from trying to show the brothers how to exploit women. Now he needs to write a book how he's going to exploit his own people, the people that he come from up out of. That's a damn shame. It's a damn shame. But, you know, they say if you see somebody stupid, you knock their head or something to that effect, you know. He told, he told uh, Umar Johnson, you know, if you stole the money or whatever, they should they should just chalk it up to the game because that's what it's all about it's about macking it's, it's a game none of these people on social media they are not serious and even if they are serious they really don't know what to do in this situation they, they don't know they don't don't they don't know Tariq Nasheed don't even claim to know just give me my money for my documentaries help me buy a Mercedes Benz Help me with this 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 house this this mansion. Some look and some you know some of these people perpetrate a fraud. They want you to think they really have all this money and whatever. And Tariq Nasheed might have a little money, but we don't know if that Mercedes Benz is a, is a it might be a rental car. And that mansion he living in, we know it's not paid for. He making notes on it. And a lot of times, because I've been in some of these mansions, I've been I've been in houses of millionaires. They are mean. I know they millionaires don't have no furniture in the, in the, in the place. You go in and basically it's empty. They have, they have furniture and decorations in certain spots for company, but basically the whole house is empty. They perpetrating a fraud. So, so on social media, he might, ha he might have this little mansion and the Mercedes Benz, a rental car and a rental house, but it's enough that you can, he can make a living off of it. See what I'm saying? 
Hey, he's a Mac Daddy. He's a Mac Daddy. Oh, there goes Aquan in the in the uh, in the chat room. Where's my documentation that these people are frauds, coons, or whatever? I didn't say I didn't call nobody nothing. I didn't call nobody nothing. I just said stated the quite obvious. I didn't call nobody a coon, an Asian, none of that stuff. I just mentioned the quite obvious that anybody that's looking can see. If I'm going to call somebody, uh, well, first of all, I don't call them coons. I don't use that terminology. I don't use, I don't call people coons and Uncle Tom uh, no more. I did back in the day. And very, and really very little. I, that's not, I don't like calling names. I, that's not my thing anyway. But uh, if I felt as though they was this and that, I didn't say they was frauds either. I said they, that Tariq Nasheed playing the Mac game. Omar Johnson, they know how to play the Mac game. You did not hear the word fraud come out of my mouth. That's what you're saying. Why do people want like to put words in your mouth? Go back and look at this, this video. The word I did not call Umar, Boyce Watkins, or nobody a fraud. I didn't, the word fraud didn't come out of my mouth at all. We need to stop lying. That's just an outright lie. I don't like liars. If I said the word fraud, go back through the video and you show me. I did not use the word fraud. I described their activity. That's what I've done. I did not call nobody no name. I did not accuse Omar Johnson of stealing or Tariq Nasheed. I'm talking about the Mac game. It's part of the Mac game. The only thing I did was show an example, give an example of what uh, Macking is and use these act actions as an example. That's all I've done. I didn't call nobody nothing. I don't know why, why do folks do that? They put words in your mouth that you didn't didn't say. Don't don't do that. That makes you look make you look bad. And see, and see. Uh, I'm over fifty years old, but I'm not senile yet. I know what I said and did not say. And uh, we had that conversation. I'm I'm done with it. You know, you can believe and do whatever that you that you know. You can call names or whatever. That's your business. But for me, if you want me to jump on that on that train, I need more because there's a lot of people who do things that's just the way they are. Don't mean that they know agent, a spy, and all like that. This is what they believe, or this is their hustle. Has nothing to do with working for the United States government, the CIA, Cointel Pro, and all this other crazy stuff. That's just the way people are. If that's the case, every Christian in the Christian church is a damn agent and spy or whatever. That's the case. But uh, yeah, I enjoyed this conversation. It went better than I thought it would. Um, I do appreciate you doing Alquan. I mean, you do a real good job. I like the, I like your work, no doubt about that. We are we are brothers in the struggle. We are brothers in the struggle, and uh, you know, we can ignore technicalities because that's all that is is a technicality. We know that something here is wrong. And uh, just like King Noble says, King Noble says that you should be able to uh, put something under a microscope and it should be able to handle being scrutinized. I have nothing to hide. I have nothing to hide. During the years, there have been many people talk about, uh, I'm going to expose you. I'm going to expose you and show. Uh, okay, well, what are you exposing? I, I don't know what they expose me. I don't run from fights. I have nothing to hide. I run to you. I don't avoid questions. I don't avoid inquiries. I run to you. I don't run away. I don't duck and dodge questions. Now, you might not like my response, but I do not duck and dodge questions. And I have nothing to hide. I don't take, I have not taken people's money and ran for the border. Or nothing. Matter of fact, I'm giving away. I can't give a, I can't even give away money. Now those brothers, they on their own. You know, they they doing their thing. People want to support them all well. To me, 
is just a, a, a train, a big train wreck. And hopefully, maybe people begin to see other brothers and sisters like myself who mean well, maybe we'll finally get a chance and get a listen and get the support that we need. And see, this is another thing I want to say before I close. Tariq Nasheed, thousands and thousands of, of, of views, and he got all this support, and Umar Johnson and Boyce Watkins, Louis Farrakhan, wonderful. But here I am talking about, oh, you talking about Farrakhan, you talking about Tariq Nasheed, and you talking about all these people. So what happens when the day comes, when all this come to me? It, it's sort of scary because you've done all this talking. Now it's time for you to put up or shut up. What are you going to do? And it's sort of scary, but I'm ready. I'm pumped, I'm ready. Bring it, I'm ready for it. I've done it to people in the past on some of these jobs. I said, you need to do it this way. You need to do it that way, blah, blah. Well, you think you could do it better? I said, yeah. And they gave me a chance and I've done it better. And I have not failed yet. I'm telling you, if you give me a chance, if you give me a chance, I do it. I do it, I do, and become the success that should have done long time ago. Because first of all, I know it's gonna take more than me. It's gonna take brains power in order to, to deal with this situation once and for all. I don't have all the answers. I don't know it all. It's gonna take brains power, but you have to have a, a certain mentality, a certain mindset in order to get the job done. And that's the key, the right mentality and the right, the right and appropriate information. And we can do this. We can, we can whoop what is called white supremacy once and for all. It won't look pretty, but we can get the job done. Well, with that said, I'm basically done running my mouth. Uh, and I hope that brothers and sisters, whoever listened to this talk, I hope that we get a little something out of it, get you some confidence, get you some understanding, and get us to learn that loving our sisters is much better than all this nonsense that we got going on. That's not gonna get you nowhere. You're gonna always be in your room looking at something and doing something. <laughs> if there's no more, Alqua, you here, you, I put up the link. I put up the link if you want to holler at me, man. Let me see. Let me put this. Let me put this. Yeah, on, really. I put the link in the in the chat chat box. And uh, what's his name? That return brother fella. You can come on in here too. I got a few minutes, more minutes. Yes, yes, ma'am, Miss uh, Filmtress. Thank you very much. I, I I try, you know, I try, I try my best. You're on a phone. Okay, you're on a phone right now. So I, I guess you can't connect on the phone. I don't I don't know how that works. But uh <laughs> Happy New Year to you. And, and you're sweet also. Thank you very much. Um I enjoyed myself. Me and my 10 subscribers. Uh, maybe I might make 15 subscribers this year. <laughs> uh, I'll return. Bring it, man. I mean, what are you going to bring that I haven't heard? I don't heard it all. Come on. Click on it. Come on. Come on and, 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 uh, and talk. Stop that writing stuff on the uh, in the chat room. You can come on in here in the box. Matter of fact, we can make a special show, just you and me, one one of these days. Yeah, I don't know. You use the word "dude." I don't know when a when a, a brother use the word "dude." I don't know if that's that's a good thing, because <laughs> I'm not your dude. I I I don't roll that way. <laughs> I told you. I told you. I roll with the sisters. I don't I don't roll that way. <laughs> 
<laughs> hey, turkey. Yeah, that's a that's a uh, that's a word from the seventy. Yeah, that, that's him. Okay. Well, anyway, with that said, uh, I thank everybody in the chat room, including you, brother Alquan. Uh, much respect to you, Femtris, and it, it was some other people, I believe. I, I don't I need to roll up here. Uh, I know it was somebody else. I'm pretty sure it was. Let me roll up here real quick. I see. If, oh, brother Leon, you still there, brother? And K, yeah, KG and Nigerian Lighthouse or something like that. Yeah, I, I know it was some other people here. Yeah, enjoyed your company, and uh, like I said, uh, it's all it's all good. We want to try to deal with this situation once and for all, and until we accept the reality of it. It's nothing going to change. And you you and I, we have doomed the generation after us. And it don't even have to be that way because we can stop this right now if we want to. With that said, until next time, you, you uh, brothers and sisters, this is Angus number 7. Matter of fact, it's according to how I feel. I might do another video lecture before the end of the night. I might. It's according to how I feel. Be sort of short, but uh, I might do that. So uh, we'll see. As important as Don Cornelius always say, I wish us love, peace, and soul.